Hey everybody, it's Nick uh, for today's tutorial. We're going to go back through some of the topics that we've talked about uh, previously in the class, and we're going to combine them to make uh, a parametric uh, vase kind of form. And this is based on work that um, Aaron Hunt and Shelby Doyle uh, worked on together for uh, ceramic printing, but they've also been using it uh, with um, a basic 3D printer, like the ones you guys have in studio. Um, so it's just a really nice kind of project to to get some interesting forms and to, to, to kind of talk about how the various processes and things that we've talked about um, like work together. Um, I think some of the code also came out of uh, one of Aaron's uh, uh, she took a class at, at the Harvard GSD uh, that, that did something pretty similar. So I want to make sure to give credit to that. Um, but we're going to take a look at it through the lens of the things that we've been talking about in um, ARC 231. And uh, yeah, so anyway, we're going to end up with something like this. There's also like an alternate um, version of it uh, that we'll talk about later in the video that um, has... Um, like this kind of pattern that you can you, you can kind of see how that's different right so so just playing with with the uh with the different things and the real kind of framework of this is the three transforms um you know which are you know like movement and rotation and scale and um you know movement we've seen in um in rhino and in grasshopper when you when you move something uh with with multiple um like numbers, you get multiple copies of it, right? You get any, anytime you apply a transform with multiple um, with multiple numbers. So, um, so just by moving something, you can make you can make a copy of it. And then, of course, the rotation. I hope is pretty obvious, where you can see that these things are kind of shifted a little bit, and they kind of shift in and out. Um, the rotation of the um, initial form is really is really obvious, right? So there's you can see that like twisting. And then the last thing is the scale and the scale is just changing the size of this like profile, right? You can see it starts off at one thing and then it gets about 150% bigger and then it goes back down to something that's smaller. So we're gonna build a script that allows you to parametrically, you know, adjust all these different parameters. Um, and then we're gonna end up with, uh, with like a vase, okay? With like a vessel. And um, we're not gonna 3D print these obviously, but um, I'll I'll show you uh, in another video uh, how you can do that. These won't print as a matter of fact because the information is not in the right kind of data and it's also not uh, a like continuous uh, line, but that's actually pretty easy to do. Um, so anyway, we're gonna start there and uh, just I'll be back in a moment. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and start off that we usually do in Grasshopper. I'm gonna go in Rhino and uh, with a new file and make a top view. Uh, and in Grasshopper, let me go ahead and start. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start by making the, the curve profile, and that's what we're gonna copy, uh, move, rotate, and scale, okay? And this is gonna be, again, a lot of this is like review, there shouldn't be any new components, but we're gonna be putting together things in ways that you, that you probably aren't familiar with yet, and that's okay. So start off with an XY plane. I'll kind of zoom in here. Um, and then we're gonna make a circle. It's just a regular circle. Okay, and then the first parameter that we're going to have is going to be the the radius, like the basics, and that's going to that's going to d determine the starting size of the of the uh, the vessel. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start with let's see, make a number slider, and let's call it just for now, because I don't know exactly know what scale this is going to be yet. Just make it uh, going to make it 50. We'll see what we'll see what that looks like here. We're in feet, but we can always rescale stuff. Later, and I'm gonna actually I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna go unit settings. Sorry, now that I'm thinking about this. Probably don't want it to be too big. Um, and I'll go back down. So if it's in inches, I might say maybe it's like I don't know six inches or something. Let's 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 keep this to an actual scale. Okay, so I got that. Next, I'm gonna offset the the curve. Um, and uh, you can. I'm just going to use like the rhino offset curve. If you notice, because we're using pufferfish, we actually have different different offset curves. So just be just be really careful which one you use. But we, we want the we want the regular rhino kind of offset curve one. Okay, so take that, plug it in for C. Now you've got an inside curve uh, and an outside curve. Okay, and then what we we're going to basically just go ahead. Yeah, I made that too big. So I'm going to say for this one, uh, just make it zero to ten. That's just fine with me. And these probably want to be yeah, smaller numbers. Okay, so we're gonna do that for 
uh, distance. Okay, so we've got we've got one here, and then you can see you can see like the relationship between those, right? So there's there's the kind of inside one and the outside one. So that's fine. Okay, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get we're gonna get the um, the uh, like points out of it uh, by dividing it. So we can lots of different ways to do this. We can divide that curve. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and leave that at the default of 10 for now. So plug this in. We'll see how this looks, and then uh, go ahead and plug that in. So now you've got these points. And in the example, so what what we're gonna do is we want to draw like kind of a smooth uh, kind of gear shape that's gonna go in you know in and out. And um, but we if we just if we just took what we had right now, it's actually not going to um it's gonna be very spiky and stuff. We want it to be really smooth. So um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and choose every other point on the inside and every other point on the outside and then choose, choose to draw a line between them okay um so i'm gonna go ahead and what we're gonna do with that is just gonna be a regular uh, it's gonna be a regular nerves curve at the end of it that's where we're gonna end up here okay and let's let's see what we got so in order to in order to only only choose one or the other um an easy an easy way to do that is just gonna be to have a dispatch And the dispatch takes a list of things, which in this case is going to be the are going to be the points, and then it's going to have some kind of a pattern. And right now that pattern is true false. So the list of points here is going to be, you know, uh, let me let me pipe this here. Let's just do. You can see what I'm talking about. So now you can see we've got every other point, and if we changed it, then it would be every other point in, in that list. And that that's just an easy way to do it. So if you think back about the logic video that we looked at just before break. Um, that's that's an application of that. Okay, so we're going to go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and copy. I'm going to use the uh, use the A input. You don't really need this point container, but I just did it to illustrate what we're doing. And then, as you can probably figure out, we're going to go ahead and just take the opposite of that. So we've got these points, those points. Okay, and then what we're going to do though? See, so the thing is, if we just if we just plug these in, it's just going to draw this, and then it's going to draw that. And in fact, why don't I just show you? So if I plug this in, ew, that doesn't really look like what we want right we have to do something special called weaving and weave is i i think is something we haven't really talked about before but it, it should should make sense you basically take um a list of values uh, uh and you plug them in you know you can have these two streams here so zero one and then what you get is a pattern and it'll 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 choose one of these then one of these then one of these then one of these until it until it finishes right so that's that's what and then you can change that by changing the pattern and you just go in and just um you know zero one or you could say you know one zero you, you can do all kinds of different like weave patterns it's really it's really really powerful um you can also if you zoom in you you, you can you can actually add more streams to it and then of course you'd have to change the logic of the um, of the way it weaves things together um, but that's it's gonna it's gonna give you a new list of points. So we go from five points and five points to a combined list of ten points. Okay, and uh, I know the suspense is killing you, right? But so then we're gonna plug we're gonna plug that in. Now something something happened here. You can see you can see it drew. Well, we just need to tell it to make it periodic, which means it needs to be it needs to be closed. So we can go ahead and just make that. Um, it's gonna glitch here. Uh, make that true. Yes. Ah. So there we go. So at the end of this, we've got our uh, our, our curve. Now, um, you don't need to mess with a curve degree unless you really want to. Um, as we know from the other video, you're going to get different effects if you do that. Um, it's just going to draw that curve like differently. In fact, if you go back to one, it's going to be spiky again. You can play with that if you want to. You don't, but that doesn't have to be parametric. Now we kind of know what this thing looks like. I'm going to go ahead and hide all these things. And I'm going to go, and the other thing I'm going to do is um, I do want to add a control here for the number of segments. And I'll just make this between, uh, well, let's call it 1 and 20 for now. And I'm going to go ahead and add more. I kind of like the look of more. You can always change these two, folks. If you if you want it to be have lots of different, um, but uh, you've got to make it the same. There we go. Ah, there we go. Okay. So by changing the kind of interior, you know, the, the kind of inside outside of this thing, we can make, oops, made that too. That is far too large. 
I go back and change that. That's what's great about parametrics. You can just go back and change things. Okay. Oh, and it's, let's make it a real number too. There we go. So that's kind of cool. You can see that, you know, the distance between the two of them will make it either, you know, it, 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 it kind of pinches them a little bit. Make yours however you want, though. But that's got a, that's got kind of a nice, oh, you can see, though, huh? Does not like, okay, so even numbers, I think, are important. So let's go to even numbers here. Just notice that. Cool. Okay, so now we got our, now we got our curve. And the next part we're going to, we're going to do is we're going to move it. You know, we talked about how important trans transforms are to this assignment. So we're going to go ahead and we've used this pattern a lot. We're going to say move. We're going to go ahead and plug in that curve. We're going to move it in the Z axis. We're going to move it up to create the vessel. Okay. And you notice though that like, you know, when you move it one time, you get, you get one, you get one copy and we want a lot of copies of it and we want them to be a certain distance apart. So we're going to go ahead and make a series component. There we go. And then we have to modify it. So what we're looking at is there's a number of things. And in this case, we might actually want, we might want a lot of them. Actually, that's the step size. Sorry. Okay, we'll do that. And then the step size is probably going to be pretty low. So yeah, that wasn't what I wanted to make. Um, let's see here. It goes between zero, maybe zero and five. Make that smaller. Okay. There we go. Okay. So you know, depending on the scale of your thing, you've got. Go ahead and make this maybe 0.1 or something like that. So now we've got something that actually does have kind of a form, but of course it's not the kind of cool form that we want. So the next step, I'm going to turn that off so you can see it better. Okay, so the next step in this is going to be to rotate them. Okay, but before we do that, let me just go ahead and take a look at what we've got. So we made our, we made our curve. We made a series of numbers. Right now it's between 0 and 100 and a very very small step size and we feed those numbers in you transform it multiple times so we have a hundred curves right so it's all just like a pretty good review at this point um okay so the next step we're going to do is we're actually going to go ahead and rotate it um and so we just go ahead and take a rotate component remember how rotation works you got the geometry and then you've got some kind of angle and the angle it wants is in, is in, is in, you know, like radians. Um, and, uh, we can, we can fix that by just making like a, um, um, a radians component. So we can put, we can put like degrees in and you get radians out. I don't know about you, but I don't think in terms of radians. Okay. Then we broke it. And the last thing is it needs, um, a rotation plane and the plane is just as simple as as each where as like the center point of each one of these things um and i don't know I, I think i yeah so we can just use an area component because these are because these are closed um we're going to go ahead and take that and take the centroid and plug it in for p and yeah okay so we don't have any input so that's why it's angry at us okay next thing we want to do though is we want to take the thing and rotate it from an angle to another angle uh, and we want to do that a hundred times. And so in order to do that, we're just going to take a range component. That's going to be the easiest way to do it. Um, and the number of things is going to be the same as the number of pieces we have. So that's easy too. Okay. And then the domain right now it's zero to one. That's not going to rotate very much. So what we want to do is we want to construct domain and that's going to go in here. Okay, and then the domain is going to be the starting rotation and the ending rotation. So for that, we do want a component that goes, that's going to be 0 to 360. And you could, if we want to rotate it more than that, just, just increase that number. But 360 is probably pretty good. Okay, so that's the starting rotation and the ending rotation. And that should give us, yeah, and that's divided up. Okay, boom, there we go. That All that happens all of a sudden. Go ahead and hide this. Now it's starting to look like something, right? And again, this is how, you know, if you, if you play with that transformation, you can see that even just a little bit of rotation is actually pretty, uh, it's pretty, 
pretty interesting. I'm going to go ahead. I'll clean this up later, but I want you guys to think about these things in terms of their transforms. So this little island over here is going to be a rotation. And this little island over here is going to be movement. All right. Okay. For the last step of what we're working on right now, we're going to go ahead and uh, scale it. And we've looked at this before uh, uh, in, 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 in like another video. Um, we're going to use a graph mapper. The graph mapper is a really nice visual way of uh, creating numbers for something uh, that doesn't rely on a lot of math. And that, and, but it, but it's, it's like graphical. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and put in a sine curve for now. And just pull this over a little bit over. There we go. And pull this in the center. And we'll get something kind of like the example that I showed you. So, okay, we've got our, we've got these things. Now we're going to scale them. And scale works very similarly to the way that rotate does, right? So take the geometry. Centroids. We actually have the centroids from here, center of scaling. And then F is going to be the scaling factor. Right now we scaled them all by half. That's no fun. We want to scale them by something like this. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead again and plug in um, another range component. And you've seen us do this before. And then we're going to go ahead and take that uh, input here again, because we have 100 of something. All right. And right now the domain is 0 to 1. Um, and um, let's see here. Yeah, so that's going to be, that's going to be fine. So we'll just uh, plug this in. And then we'll plug this in. Oh, and then we can also, as we've done, I think it's helpful to have some kind of some kind of a multiplier, and we'll make the multiplier something between one and five. You don't want to go crazy with it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we'll plug this in and plug it in for F. Go back and hide this one. And now it, well, that looks like it. Cool. All right, scale. Okay, so we've got, and, and I should probably show you. So you know, really want to be be like actually playing with that with that piece. Um, so you can you can you can kind of play with that, you know, especially where that curve begins. You know, will kind of give you more of a difference in it. Um, I think you guys kind of get that, and then um. The multiplier is is actually just going to affect that. So if you if you find yourself with it really kind of puckered at the bottom, in a way you don't want, you can go ahead and add this multi multiplier to. You can experiment with some other stuff too, as we've as we've seen before. Um, sine wave is probably going to be uh, you know is is probably going to give you some. Oh, that's kind of cool too. Um, so you you guys can kind of play with that. Um, different graph types the other thing you can do is just simply you know like a bezier will work now why is it broken because you can't have you you know you can't have zero you know for the for the base but if you have if you have like a bezier it's going to give you a little bit more a little bit more control over that and i think you guys all know that you guys have all seen that before okay so for the last step you'd say well what do i do with this thing you know what can i do with it well um i think the best thing to do is probably just to make a simple pipe for now this is going to slow things down on like on your computer, so I, I would I would really recommend not doing this until until you're kind of done with it. It's not going to be very parametric once you plug this in. Um, okay, so and then I would say for the for the radius of this thing because it was meant to be you know printed on a clay 3D printer or a regular 3D printer, it, it's it, it it expects something that's very that's very thin. Um, what you could do if you wanted to be parametric is um, actually take the step size from here and plug it in and that will actually give you a profile that is that is that is equal to the distance and that'll fill this entire thing in otherwise you could just basically make your own you know slider and just kind of play with it depending upon how much negative space you want or how much overlap you want for these things um, so uh, again for a number slider yeah just probably are not very big. I'd say between zero and three, maybe. Again, don't worry if you don't get get that figured out. Like first, you can always change it later. So um, we did have, I think it was point one. So I am going to start with that. And then uh, let's see the end caps. I think you'd probably just want a flat cap. That'll make them solid. Um, and then go ahead and plug these in, and it'll 
it might hurt for a second. There you go. It'll pop in. Um, now you can go ahead and start hiding this stuff. And then I, as I always do, I do like a preview, like a custom preview. I like how it makes everything cotton candy when it starts off. You can always just make make a different uh, like material shader if you want one. Um, I can do like a color color with a U, a little color swatch. Pop that in. Maybe make it a little less white. There, now it's kind of like clay. Cool. And there you go. So have fun with that. You know, just a real simple like trip back to review some things. Let's just take a step back here. So we basic curve. Do a little bit of uh, turn this off here. A little bit of data manipulation to take these list of points, split them up, and then weave them back together again into this really interesting uh, NURBS structure. And then from there, we transformed it using move, right? The most basic kind of transform. We used a series, multiple numbers. Um, and we rotated that list. And we made a domain to do that. So we can have you know lots of turns. You can see how slow it is now that I've uh, changed it. Or just a few turns, you know, depending upon how you want to do that design. You get something like what we had before. Um, and then we took the rotations and we transformed them with scale to create another form. And then just a simple pipe. And you know, in order to in order to render this thing or whatever, just go ahead and bake, bake the pipe. Preview is handy because it allows us to really see what it looks like without the kind of transparent, um, kind of candy like jelly thing that it looks like. You know, what it usually looks like in in Grasshopper. Uh, but that's that's the basic that's the basic kind of uh, like form that we've got for this. So to wrap things up, uh, we're going to do something a little bit uh, just to kind of change this. We're going to do something fun. Um, going to change the data structure of what we've got for the rotation a little bit. So uh, instead of just rotating from one number to another, we're going to we're going to actually rotate uh, like sections in a pattern, and we're going to repeat that pattern, and that's going to give us um, just a just a different uh, like kind of form. Uh, and so the way to do that is we're going to start. We really got rotate. We got our radians like component, right? We're gonna go ahead and disconnect the things that we have. We don't need we don't need these anymore. Don't lose that. Okay. Put in a graph mapper. Go back to sign again. Just go ahead and make something like this. And we don't want there to be no rotation, so we're gonna go ahead and pull this up a little bit. Okay. And as usual, we're gonna use a range component with that. Okay, we're going to keep the domain at 0 to 1, and then we're going to make a multiplication component. And this is, you know, really similar to the way that we use these, uh, but um, where, where we're going to take some something here and we're going to multiply it before we use it. Um, for, so for the slider, though, I'll just go ahead and this is going to be our rotation. So we need to be a pretty big slider. Um, for now, I'm going to go ahead and just make that like 25. Um, plug that in. Plug it into here. Um, it's not going to work though. You can see, like, see here, it, it's, it's going to, it's going to do this, and then the data just repeats itself, and it's kind of boring. Uh, what we need to do is actually repeat that data. Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna take this transform and copy it uh, until we're done. And uh, the way to do that is to go into the repeat data component. Repeat data just takes a pattern, the data d, uh, and you want to repeat it a certain length of time. And uh, what we're going to do with that is, uh, is we're going to find the so the the number of uh, of of our of our you know objects in the count, and the data is going to be what what actually comes out of here. But we're gonna we're gonna do something a little bit different first. We're gonna add a division component because we want to decide how many how many uh, pieces are in this pattern. So we're gonna do a division component. And then we're going to make a number slider that's probably between 0 and 10. It's going to be a, kind of a small number of things. And then let's just say 5. Um, and then for A, we'll plug in the number of things we have again. So this will say, like, okay, I want, like, 20 
uh, 20 pieces are going to like participate in that in that pattern uh, and then plug that in for the number in the domain here okay and then it's gonna so now we got a bigger piece and so this number again will kind of determine like the number of times that we see that we see that pattern actually it's not gonna do what I want yet <laughs> I didn't finish it oh sorry so we'll take the take this which is gonna come out of there and we're gonna repeat it however many times you need to and, until we get a hundred things now we've got a hundred things in our data plug that in yeah and that gets interesting you have that kind of wave going there so again this is the rotation this is going to be the pattern that you have and right now it's just this kind of sine wave kind of profile but you can you can change that as you know and this is the number of times uh that it will repeat so if you have fewer numbers if you have a lower number, right, you're going to have a couple repetitions. So it's kind of up to you to decide what you want to do with that. And you can obviously change this. Um, but that's just a variation, and that's kind of like what we saw in like, the earlier part of the video. Uh, just kind of a cool kind of zigzag pattern. Um, that's what that's what they call it. Something you can change, too, to get to get a different kind of space. Like right, right now, this is nice and overlapping. Um, you could go ahead and change the pipe diameter. You could also go ahead and... Um, and reduce the count of the pieces and increase the step size a little bit and that would give you space between the layers if, if you'd like so that that's kind of an interesting effect you may or may not like that but um but anyway so that that's that's another way to look at that that's that's um just a nice kind of variation but for the assignment go ahead and experiment with these i want you to make your own kind of pot your own kind of vessel whatever you want to call it uh, and then go ahead and, you know, like I said, bake the pipe and you can use that to make line drawings and you can use that to make renderings. But, you know, especially like when you've got these, pay attention to not just the outside of it or not just the form, but also the negative space, like the space between things, the space of the, of the actual vessel, um, itself. I think those things are really interesting. Um, look at the, look at the shadows that it casts. You can, you can put some kind of a, like a plane or something and let it, let it cast shadows. Um, but, you know, like, think about the way that you communicate about uh, what you've made and uh, go ahead and share that with us. Okay, I will catch you guys uh, soon.